year can feel like a lifetime when you're waiting to come back. And there's no bigger comeback than a TT comeback. But who's had the best one? Whose comeback has been the most iconic? That one comeback that everybody talks about. Who has had the best comeback? Um, best comeback. The biggest comeback? I would say, you know, obviously that I think the most iconic is the Halewood one. Halewood. It's gotta be Mike Halewood. Mike Halewood, obviously. You've got the iconic ones, you know, like Mike Halewood. Do you know what I mean? Obviously that, but I can't remember that. That's before my time, so. Probably Mike Halewood's had the best one. Probably a touch before my time, but obviously it's just spoken about all the time. That's the easiest question you'll ever answer about the Isle of Man TT, and that is Mike Halewood back in 1978. Absolutely incredible. And I was around for that. From the start line, Mike shows he's in a class of his own. It's a fairy tale comeback by the greatest road racer of all time. And Dad always used to talk about that because it was his era, the Mike Halewood. And you know, I, I, you dismiss it because you're a kid, like, oh yeah, yeah. I read about it, listened to the, my dad and all his mates talk about it. My dad was here, so. I'm old enough to remember Mike Helt's comeback, you know, I'd be 17 or 18 at the time. And with all of the years that Mike had off, you know, Mike, who was still the most successful Isle of Man TT racer of all time, you know, just ahead of Agostini. You have won, what is it, 300 races, 60 Grand Prix, I've forgotten how many TTs and World Championships, but where do you go from here? I mean, what down. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, are you, going to, are you going to switch off before you go down, or are you going to keep on racing for another two, three years, or don't you have any plans? Uh, at the moment, I haven't got any plans. He went off and did some car racing, didn't he? And then uh, come back and... You know, to come away for 11 years and come back like that, it's nuts. It's just nuts. It's pretty unfathomable, really. The big question about Mike's chance is whether he can make good what is forgotten in 11 years away from racing on the island. All the stories you've heard about the Isle of Man being rammed and you couldn't move are true. It was. that The island's population had doubled because they wanted to see Mike Harewood back at the Isle of Man TT. Iconic bikes, iconic people. Iconic races for, that you have around the TT. And everybody knows that if you have a load of time off and come back and do something like that, it's just legendary. You just stand out. An hour into the race, and with a pit stop for fuel, Halewood has an unassailable time lead. To return on this course, which changes so much year on year, you know, um, to have a big break and then come back and be strong, that strong and win is uh, just on that side, even away from the fact that he can, comes back and wins. If I try and think to not come for 10 years and then rock up and win. <laughs> it would be hard to imagine a, an 11 year layoff. Yeah, some going. Yeah, I think it'd be really tough to do that nowadays for sure. You don't stay away from the art of, the art of man as well, of all places. I mean, remember this is 37 and three quarter miles. This is not a two mile short circuit in the UK somewhere or anywhere around the rest of the world. This was the height of Man TT, who had changed even those 11 years. You know, bikes had changed, etc. There's no way Halewood was gonna come back and win. And boy, he won. And not only did he win, he won in style. How Halewood got it around at them speeds, to me, the man was a genius, just a complete magician. As I say, Mike Halewood, possibly the greatest TT story of all time. He's come back in 1978. And then, not only that, he comes back in 1979 and wins again. You know you've done the lap really? 114. No. Yeah. You're joking. No, if you did it. Yeah, I wasn't even trying very hard. And then said that was it. Called it a day. Um, 14 TT wins, at, which at the time felt as if no one would ever beat. All the comebacks is there. There's no point in packing one because there's been that many big ones. It just depends what area you're in, really, and, and, and what way you look at it. I suppose, like, standout ones, you know, like Joey Dunlop. Now then, Joey Dunlop. Joey Dunlop on the works engine SP1. He hasn't won a Formula One TT since 1988. He's 48 years old, and the pressure is really on this time. 
you know, were written off as the, as the guy who couldn't ride a big bike anymore, you know, an old statesman and all that. And then he showed everybody <laughs> the road home, didn't he? Oh, oh Joey. hello, Joey. So Joey goes through there along, drop your body. I mean, Joey's come back on the SP1. I mean, I was his teammate that year and everything, and it was sensational. But Joey was always there or thereabouts, do you know what I mean? And that's the thing, he won 26 times, Joey Dunlop. And it's sometimes you think, oh yeah, okay, 26, but a lot of them are on the smaller 125, 250s. But then to come back in 2000 at the age of 48 and win, yeah, that was... And takes the win then over the line, Joey Dunlop. Just like, wow, where did that come from? It has been a long time since this man has won a superbike race here at the TT. He restores Honda's honour by taking the Formula One race. There was loads of people that had good comebacks, loads. The best comeback, I'd say, has to be John McGuinness. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head then with McGuinness's 2015 senior. Right, I will tell you about McGuinness's 2015 senior because I know, and a friend of mine said exactly the same, and it was, it was true, everyone had written him off, I hadn't. I don't know if I ever thought it was written off. That's probably why I never, I never said it. He was, uh, he was looking at his, his odds in the morning on, on I think he, it was something like 15 to one or something, and he was like, fuck off, I'm better than that. <laughs> and he was kind of, that was where it then became him thinking, I'm going to show these boys what it's all about. Four laps, John McGuinness. Away he goes on the Honda Fireblow, front wheel up in the air as he tears towards Bray Hill. <laughs> and he just put on a masterclass, didn't he? Yeah. It was just like... Yeah, I mean, I think he surprised a few there. Not, not necessarily in his ability, I think. Just shocked, caught a few people out because he, he hadn't done a lot and then just come at, you know, all guns blazing in that 15 senior race. Fantastic riding by John. Didn't think he had it in him this week, but happy to be proved wrong. You know, people doubt you I suppose and then to prove the doubt was wrong that, that's quite a, a cool thing and he just pulled out the bag from nowhere to win and I think kind of stamped his authority to say that he's still around. To me it was no surprise when he did win it. Surprised a lot of other people because of his other results that week but now John McGuinness um, yeah that was an absolute masterclass and it showed that he was still the man. John McInnes comes over the line to take his seventh senior TT and his 23rd TT overall. There's been comebacks in different areas for different reasons, for, with different people, and I would say in their mind it's, it's always been personal to them, you know, but everybody's got a different outlook and whose own comeback has been bigger and better than somebody else's. Number four, coming up out of Bray Hill, Michael Rutter. Michael Rutter as well. Rutter, everyone forgets Rutter about Rutter. You know, Rutter went off and... He was at the peak of his TT career and then... Rutter goes over the line and now we will have to wait. I read somewhere that uh, you'd said that if you won a TT, it'd be the last time you came here. Um, I didn't say that, I just said like, well, I'd, I'd like to do World Superbike or something like that, man. I can always come back here at a later date if, if I could do something like that. I'd love to do it, but you know, it's getting the ride. He goes off and we're doing World Superbikes and other things, took him to different places and then he came back and you know, and he's still riding around there to this, to this day, it's amazing really. So that's a real good comeback as well, I think. So yeah, um, I'd say then Michael Roy, yeah, for sure. Even like Josh Brooks going away for five years. And... Yeah, for, for Brooksy to, again, I think if Brooksy had kept at it. It would be lovely to see Josh have a bit of continuity because you know, that man's another exceptional motorcycle racer. If he just kept with it, it'd be, He'd be there, he'd be, he'd be running with Hickey and Michael for sure, you know, he'd definitely be knocking some TT wins in. This isn't a new experience for me, so I, do, I, I rode 2013 and 14, and then I had 15 and 16 away. So, you know, I, I was already just in my learning process for 13 and 14, um, and, then I, and then I put a big two year gap in there, and then I had, you know, obviously 17 and 18, and then now there's a five year gap. Well, you know, I say he's done it, gone away, come back, done it. And he loves it, don't he? He loves riding his bike. He understands that you're riding your bike accordingly to what's around it, you know. There's obstacles and hazards around it, you sort you ride accordingly. So I respect him for that, and when he said, I'm not going to TT, I respect him for that. But he's, he's back in a good team. It'll keep Hickey on his toes, keep his pencil sharpened up. And... Were Josh to be here two or three years, you know, the man can lean over and brake late. He knows how to ride a motorbike. Yeah just needs that little bit of extra circuit knowledge and continuity of coming.
because he is a classy rider and I, be I believe that if he hadn't have went away he'd, he would have had he'd have, he'd have won TT by now. Yeah. You know, you never know with Joss if he's flying in the BSB and his confidence is okay, has a good northwest. You know, who knows where he could end up at, at, at the Alaman TT. He could be right at the sharp end on the, on the podium at least, but... Uh... I, bet, I bet a lot of people, I said, I'm telling you now, he will be on the podium when he comes back. And they're like, oh, he'll not, he'll not be interested. And I said, he will be. I wish I'd have put money on that. Comebacks come in all shapes and sizes. And when your comeback tastes this sweet, there's only one question to answer. Why would you ever stay away? You know, I, I get that question a lot, and the answer is actually not very interesting. The, the unfortunate truth is that for me to have a secure racing career is to focus on um, BSB. And unfortunately, in doing that, it doesn't always allow to do the Isle of Man TT. So I've never decided to be away. They say you can never have a comeback without first having a setback. A champion is defined not only by winning, but the adversity that they have to overcome. So let's change this up a bit. Let's try a different angle. If it's a setback that paves the way for success, then who has had the most to come back from? I'd have to say probably Hutchie, to be fair. Hutchie, I would say. Yeah. What he's been through is just mind-boggling. The one that kind of sticks out in everyone, I think everyone's minds is probably Hutchie. You know, he's been through the mill with everything. Oh, I think the easiest one straight away is Hutchie. I suppose, for me, it would be Robert Dunlop. Oh, my God! Robert Dunlop! You have to think someone like, like Robert Dunlop fucking suffered a lot, do you know what I mean? He's off, and that is the remains of the machine. I mean, Robert Dunlop, I can still see the images of him after his crash at Belaf, crawling away from the bike, you know, the wheel had collapsed on him, etc. It was a very famous court case. Well, he left Belaf Bridge, and just watch again, see what happens. It appeared to be the rear wheel. Just watch this amateur video. There! The rear wheel just appears to break away from the machine. What an incident in this Formula One TT race. I can remember like Robert Dunlop having some severe injuries there and there. I think, yeah, it'd have to be, it'd have to be Robert from, and I've heard of quite a few stories and there's probably a lot more that nobody knows. That crash at Balaf ended his career and it proper wiped him out. I mean, the poor lad couldn't use his left arm or anything, you know what I mean? He was just he made aware of what injuries you've got and what they've had to overcome and it's just incredible. And I think some of them happened quite close, you know, like he had a big one here and then maybe another one at the northwest just being back or, you know, things like that. And You know, Robert came back with severe injuries and modifications to the bike to be able to ride and so on. When he fell here in 94, you know, people, a lot of people had big injuries and came back, but, you know, we had actually got to the point where, you know, lost a lot of power in his, in his arm and his leg and obviously that's why it limited him to a certain size of motorbike. You know what I mean, admittedly you can't ride the big bike because they're such an animal, but to even ride the little one dingers and the 250s, you know, it, that is phenomenal, isn't it? Robert Dunlop, a dream to come to the TT this year. He passed the fitness medical on the Monday morning of practice week, right here on the Isle of Man, and had to go back home to Ireland to collect his machinery and all his kit and come here to start practice week and then broke the lap record and is in the process of leading this ultra lightweight TT. An unbelievable achievement for him. And then to come back to the TT and then win again at the TT for injury wise, that's phenomenal. You came here saying that you were going to do the lap record and this, that and the other and nobody even knew if you were going to pass the medical. Did you know? Or did you just believe? Well, I'd always had belief in myself, but I knew that my broken right tibia was the biggest problem, and uh, I knew that riding a bike it wouldn't be as critical, you know, as, as your upper body if something wrong with that. So my collarbone was only a hairline fracture, which was very good, and I got a lot of fuzzy on, a lot of laser treatment on both my collarbone and my and my uh, broken legs. So it really has paid off. I had physio this morning before and out, and I feel great. 
to come back, especially back then, where the duck probably back then they hadn't the same recovery systems as, as, as they, you know nowadays. There's a lot more technology involved and stuff now. Doesn't make it any easier, but for from what he came through back then was was was, was pretty hard. Robert was fucking you know he's a fucking hard man. You know what I mean you can see where Michael gets it from. He's it's in his DNA. He's just fucking hard fucking men, you know. So yeah yeah it's. Robert was, Robert was special, you know, a special, do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's got to be, got to be Robert. The two that stick out have to be Robert Dunlop and Ian Hutchinson. Due to the severity of the injuries they suffered, you know, they were career ending injuries really, but the fact that they came back, you know, and, um, and did what they did and went on to win again at the Isle of Man TT. One, that shows the kind of character that those guys were or have. Two, what it means for them to come to, back to the Isle of Man TT to want to do it again. And uh, three, it's just, I mean, it's fairy tale stuff, really. Number four, Ian Hudson going for that fifth win this week. What a week he's had, it just hasn't put a foot wrong. Hutch's job's pretty special, I mean, I was Hutch's teammate when he busted his leg in the Paget team. I was Hutch's teammate when he won his first TT. We were teammates on the HM Plum Bays. Ian Hutchinson, that has made a total of eight TT wins, five this week. Can you believe you've done that? Five wins in a week. No one thought it could ever be done. Can you really yeah, make sense of that? It is unbelievable. You know, luck's just been on our side so much this week. and. I'll certainly never ever complain if I ever break down again, you know. It's, uh, I've had my bad years here and I'm going to uh, enjoy the good year. <laughs> Unreal what Ian's gone through, it's been uh, tough, absolutely. Like I said, it's a poor hutch again. Like I said, he had that massive, you know, he lost his leg, didn't he? The, the, we've all seen the footage as well of Ian Hutchinson's horrific accident at Silverstone. No fault of his, but just when he was about to dominate, it seemed, the Isle of Man and the TT, you know, he had it snatched away from him, you know, so cruelly. I guess say, uh, Ian, I think, because yeah, that was a big smash up. That was, that was close losing leg like that. We think Ian Hutchinson, the five times in a week winner of the TT, uh, may be the lad who's down there. His left leg was hanging off. He, was coming back, coming back, nearly ready for the TT, and then it got set back again. It's, it's been through so much shit that you, I don't think he's ever told anybody mm. all of it. And he talks about operations, like he's going to the shop, you know, oh, I went and got one of them, and then they, then they did that while I was there, I'm like, what? Yeah, the, a dozen operations, and then he's probably into 40 operations now, he's done it a couple more times afterwards, so. You know, the strength and character and pain he must have gone through, basically, to get back on the bike and do what he loves doing. The spirit of, of him is incredible, you know, the strength and the mental strength that he has to get back on a bike, I think, is probably one of the bravest things I've ever seen. His drive and his determination to get back racing again, it's just, well, what's his book called? Miracle Man. It's, it's, that's correct, isn't it? <laughs> this is the man who's on the charge. This is Ian Hutchinson, number nine. This is the comeback complete for me. He's, I, what he's been through over the last five years is it's, it's quite unreal. Well done, Hutchinson. Ian, we're going to come straight to you, I think, because the whole world, I think, wants to hear from you the initial reaction to getting back to that seat on the TT. I need to try not to talk too much because I don't want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> The tears are flowing, it has to be said. To win three TTs, obviously, it's not just a comeback. He'd, he'd been at the top, he'd won five TTs in 2010. He'd obviously had that accident, he's come back to win not even just a 600 race, he won a 600 race and a super start race. And I think he's won a super bike race since. Ian Hutchison, number four, won the super sport race this morning, and I reckon he's the favourite in my opinion. Wheelie over there to take his third TT win of the week 2016 to equal Mike Hale with 14 wins. To come back and keep wanting to come back after what's happened and what he's achieved, it's, it's quite uh, remarkable really. 
the punishment that that man's put through his body is just unreal. I mean, if I would, probably wouldn't be sat here with 23 wins if it wasn't if he hadn't have had his injury. I think Hutchie definitely has, has been through the mill on a number of occasions. And he's obviously had his little crash, or not the one, but a crash up the mountain on the Tyco bike. I mean, oh, Hutchie's down. He's yeah, he, Ian Hutch, number four's gone down. Hutchie's had an absolutely mammoth get off. He's he's up. We he sat up anyway. Then another crash, and then came back again. And it seems to keep hitting. It seems to keep coming back to haunt him one way or another. Yeah, he's gone through so so much, and yet when he can, still turns up and cracks on and and is fast. You know, a lot of people were, were, were very concerned about him racing again based on his previous injuries. But he did it, he came back and, and he did race and he did really, really well. And it was only, it was here, wasn't it? It was for him to come back here, wasn't it? To just to keep wanting to come back and, like I said, that determination to come back and still compete at the front, it's, like I said, it's a fair, fair achievement and a fair, I don't may hap to him. Every racer has their setbacks. Unfortunately, it comes with the territory. But it's not about getting knocked down, it's about building yourself back up. The tougher the setback, then the bigger the comeback usually is. And if we're talking the toughest of setbacks, then nothing compares to this. Connor's thing was horrific, wasn't it? I mean, Connor's crash was just this. Oh, fuck. you know what? I keep forgetting. Yeah, Connor's come back. Oh, yeah, Connor's, yeah. Obviously, Connor's another man. Oh, fuck me. Oh, yeah, Connor. It's an iconic. No, it's not iconic. What's the word? It's a. Ah, in fairness to Connor, no, he definitely took a slap. No, you wouldn't want. I'm not going to assure you, he'd probably think he wouldn't want that one again. Oh, I don't know. It just pops up, doesn't it? And he definitely took a. took a right scud now. That's. That was. That'd be enough to work in your whistle for you. I don't think you'd be wanting to do that every day of the week. He had a massive one up there landed in it, so he's another person, like I said, but... Yeah, Connor's another one, he went here, that massive crash, obviously, off the mountain. And then... Looking at it was ten... You know, it looked more horrific, because, obviously, the man dropped off at the edge of a mountain, you know what I mean? I've seen it millions of times, but every time you're like, oh, you know, it's an unbelievably cringeworthy experience to watch that crash. That crash Connor Cummins had in 2010, like by rights he shouldn't be racing bikes after a crash like that. Like he, he did well, he did well to, um, you know, come out of that with his with his life, with his arms and legs. Like, the man just went over a hedge like a rag door, you know, and, and he was broke up into a million pieces. Without a shadow of a doubt, Connor is the most injured rider that's currently racing at the top level. He had a broken back. He's got steel rods in his back. That's pretty heavy, that you know. And again, he's. A superhuman being, you know. I don't like saying it because I don't want Connor to see footage of me that maybe will upset him. But I, I believe Connor would have won 10 or 15. Like that year that happened, he was gone. Do you know what I mean? He smoked everyone by 20 something seconds. Was he in the lead by? There it is at the end of lap four. Pit stops coming up. 21 second advantage for this man, Connor Cummins. Connor was uh, in the very first race at the uh, TT that year, the Superbike race. Connor was leading by 22 seconds and his clutch went. Hang on a minute, that lead is going to go. Yeah, it looks like he's stuck in gear, or like you said, the clutch is gone. I mean, it's very rare now when someone wins by 20 or 30 seconds. He had a 20 odd second lead after. It was a two laps. This, I think that was his third TT. He'd not started road racing until about 2.08. He was still a very young boy. And then he had those horrific injuries. Who knows, had he not had the time out, and so on, and his trajectory continued the way it was going. I, I have a lot of time for Connor, and I'm cautious of it because it has to. He has to know that he, you know what I mean, and that has to fuck your head. I think there's no comparing Connor, and I know he doesn't like talking about it, but Connor's big crash and coming back from that, breaking a lot of different things and coming back and the injuries he's had, are, again. Um, yeah, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? He's, he's uh, been through a lot. To crash in a 2010 senior, go through hell to get back on a bike nine months later and line up at the TT as well following that. And I didn't have full function in my left arm, left knee. I was, I was nowhere near physically fit to ride it. I was mentally 90%. I, I you know, threw myself at it 
yeah, I know what I went through. And this is number 10, this is Conor Cummins. Lots of people around this course want to see this man get a result. It's quite emotional for Conor, I think. It, you know, if I had um, been through what he had been through, I, I wouldn't even put a leg over a bike ever again. But here he is, you know? Um, he's a trooper, he's a real trooper. He's got the best poker face in the world, as, as Conor. <laughs> I know he's in pain sometimes. He doesn't whinge, he gets on with the job. Never hear him moaning at all. To get fit enough and, and focused enough after something like that to race around here, race around the TT course, the, the most physically demanding road racing circuit in the world. Um, yeah, that's nothing short of incredible, really. Connor's come back, he's gone, he's, and yeah. He's gone fast. Though. He's gone faster than he ever has, so yeah, fair play. It's just a Manx thing, I think. If you look at the last six big bike events, Connor's been on the podium. If you're a betting man, and I've, I've never bet on a horse, but you know, they're, apparently they study form. If you look back at the form from 18, 19, uh, 22, Connor is there. You know, he became the fastest Manxman, a 133 on a stocker, and he's so overlooked, people. Oh, Connor surprised me. No, oh, come on. In, the, in fairness to him, he's, he's come back, he's probably stronger now than he probably ever was. I rest my case. <laughs> You know, he's now one of the, the guys to watch out for and the, like a solid podium guy, if not a guy that's in the mix for the win, so. I hope he wins one. I really do hope he wins one. He deserves one. Connor deserves a win. I think for the Isle of Man, and for him, he deserves to win one. Do you know what I mean? I know you've got to earn one, but he definitely deserves one to come back from uh, that massive shunt. We would love to see a Manxman you know, go, come to the top. We nearly did last year, which was, which was amazing. I mean, it, you know, him getting onto the step, everyone thought he'd won, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was lovely to see, um, but that's a, that's a true spirit of who he is as a road racer. I think the determination to race again, period, or even initially to get back on a bike and see what's possible and feasible and, you know, and adaptations to the bike, you know, as we said there with Robert's bike. And, and Mike had also been injured because he got injured in F1 in car racing and he had to switch the gear lever to the other side, much the same as Ian. You know, even our bike with Connor, you know, we, we have to take into account some of his injuries to get him on the bike more comfortably. I'd definitely put me up there, for sure. Again, there's obviously others that have gone, gone through massive injury to, and, and come back to TT. Probably more than what we're actually aware of. These are the guys that are in the, in the spotlight, you know. I'm thinking there might be guys that have had a massive comeback and we just don't know about it. Riders, certain riders come in the spotlight a bit and they unfortunately have an injury and therefore they, they get more coverage than others. You know, every, I think every athlete and every Every motorcycle person has, has got a story. You know, without hearing all the stories, I, I don't know who's the, who's the greatest or biggest comeback. No, we've never had a, an injury as such to come back to the TT app. All right, so I'm going to touch the wood on my chair first. <laughs> Broken bones and stuff like that, but not... Not yet, really. No, I've had a few, but nothing, like, too bad, you know? Not compared to some. Oh, he's hit the wall! Oh, oh it's a big, that's... big accident there. The virtual boys. Nathan Harrison and Job again. Oh. It. oh, Harrison's off. Harrison has gone down. That's a big old crash just there. No, it was really tough to get him head around because that, because that, it weren't just a crash at TT, but that was like the end of TT, end of everything, and it's hard. And you know, you're 46 to. Grow, I had to grow 52 millimetres my leg back. I may mean, never have even spoke about it until now. It's the same danger for taking powers as there is trying to win. 